Hey guys, Rex here with iDrop News, and today I'm gonna show you how to get the most out of iOS 9. Now iOS 9 is Apple's most recent software update, and it's been out for a few months now. But I'm still discovering some new and useful features, so I thought I would share a few of them with you guys. First is what Apple calls Proactive Assistant. I didn't pay too much attention to this feature when it released, but as time's gone by, I keep noticing it more and more. To take advantage of Proactive Assistant, first you need to make sure the feature is turned on. You can do that by going to Settings, General, Handoff, and Suggested Apps, and make sure that the Suggested Apps is switched on. Proactive Assistant shows you suggestions for what you might need before you have to go search for it by using both your location and app usage. So for example, I listen to a lot of podcasts. So when I plug in my headphones, Proactive Assistant brings up the option to go straight into my podcast app. Also, if you include a location in a calendar event, Proactive Assistant will assess traffic conditions and let you know exactly when you need to leave to get there on time. Next are improvements to Spotlight Search which kind of tie into Proactive Assistant, but the improvements make the search function on your iPhone more full-featured and allow you to search a much wider variety of information. You can access a list of proactive suggestions by swiping left from the home screen. Here you'll be presented with suggestions like contacts and apps that you may want to access, along with nearby options like gas, for example, which has come in handy more than once for me. And you'll also see recent news stories if you're interested. Rather than being forced to use Siri when you're in a quieter public environment, you can now type in certain information in Spotlight Search. For example, I'm a Memphis Grizzlies fan, so if I type Grizzlies into the search bar, I'll get the score from their most recent game. Another helpful new use of the search bar is to do quick calculations. It's great for calculating a quick tip or converting measurements and so on. But my favorite improvement to Spotlight Search is being able to search apps for information. Now the app has to support Spotlight Search, but a lot of developers have already updated their apps to take advantage of the feature. So say I'm looking for a document I need to work on. Now in Spotlight Search, I can just type the name of the document or information about the document, and it should pop right up. Now all these search improvements in iOS 9 fall under the Siri umbrella, but of course you can still use Siri to voice search for information. And for those of you using an iPhone 6S or a 6S Plus, you can activate Siri in iOS 9 by just saying, hey Siri, without the need for actually touching your phone. So next are a few features I recently discovered in the Photos app. When you're scrolling through photos, you can simply swipe down on a selected photo to get back to the album view instead of having to tap on the back arrow in the top left corner. Of course, you can also use 3D Touch to peek into photos as well if you have an iPhone 6S or 6S Plus. Another handy feature in photos is you can click select and then just drag your finger across the thumbnails of the photos to select a whole bunch of them. It's a lot easier if you need to do some bulk editing than just going one by one and tapping each of them. So you've probably noticed in iOS 9 that when your battery gets down to 20%, you get a notification asking if you want to go into low power mode. Now low power mode is a handy feature that Apple claims will give you an extra hour of battery life if it's activated at 20%. But you can activate it manually if you know you're going to need some extra juice later. To do that just go to settings, battery, and the option is right there. Low power mode will conserve power by limiting internet usage and disabling background app activity among other things. Okay, so Notes may not be the most exciting app, but iOS 9 has brought some useful updates. You can now do things like make checklists, add photos, and even sketch right inside the app. There are also some more style options than before, like adding titles and headings. You can also add things to Notes from the Share Sheet and other apps as well, and a link will be created that you can access later. For example, you can add location from the Maps app, or a web page link from Safari, and so on. Alright, last is the new Wallet app. If you haven't set up Apple Pay with either your credit card or a supported debit card, I definitely recommend it. With more and more places taking Apple Pay every day, it's really useful. And let's be honest, it's just kind of fun to pay for something with your phone. You can find apps that support Wallet inside the Wallet app and Apple's continuing to offer support for more and more cards. 
You can now use your Kohl's charge card with Apple Pay, and Apple has said they will be adding more store credit cards soon, along with rewards cards like my Panera, for example. Well, that's it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and as always, keep it locked right here to iDrop News for more, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Later. Thank you.